What's up everybody, Real Ninja here and it's time for a how-to. Today we're going to be talking about trolling for salmon. We're going to go over the rods, the line, the reels, the baits, the weights, uh, the techniques, the lures. We're going to go A to Z, so come on, let's do it. So salmon season's really hot right now, 2018 season. Uh, this Sunday will be the second week of the season and everybody's getting limits or near limits. They've just been slaying them. And most people are using a salmon release with a flasher, with a leader, to a salmon trolling hook, uh, and an anchovy, and I'll show you how to rig that up. First, starting with the rods. I've got a couple of rods here. Um, but the characteristics of the rod that you want to use is you want something with a good strong backbone but a nice limber tip. Uh, eight to nine feet long is good and the reason why you want that is because when you get the salmon up to the boat it has a, an opportunity to flip off sometimes and when it tries to get away from the boat and dive down or if it head, head comes out of the water and it flips you want some give there so the rod will move with the fish. If it's too rigid, um, there's not enough play there for the fish, it can flip off. Sometimes, I think a lot of times, fish are lost at the boat. As far as the line goes, 30 to 40 pound braid. Uh, the reels I'm using are Abbott's. Um, I'll put a link in the description about which ones I got on here and what the rods are. Um, now let's go into the leaders. So I'm gonna tie my leaders up using this 30 pound monofilament leader line. And the advantage to this is it's stiff, so it stays straight. And by doing that, you have less tendency to tangle. Also, your swivels will, will rotate better with this kind of line. Most of the charter boats and a lot of the other fishermen out there are using live anchovies that they get in San Francisco or Berkeley or they're using tray anchovies. Here I have two different size tray anchovies. These ones are larger, these ones are a little smaller. And here I have three different size salmon hooks. So these tray anchovies are the next best, best thing to live bait. Um, they cost more than buying the bag of the cheap bulk anchovies, but they're way better quality. They're intact, they have all their scales on them really good scent they're very well preserved so what you want to do is take your your salmon hooks and find the appropriate size six op, op barbless hook um, if the hook's not barbless you can break it off with some pliers and dress it up with a file and the wire on here some stainless steel wire so the eye of the salmon hook is going to come out of the anchovy's mouth and you want the end of the hook to be inside the tail so this is perfect size just like that so what you do and you thaw out your anchovy a little bit if it's frozen don't do it frozen it can break and fall apart maybe put it in some water and let it thaw out a little bit that's what I did so you figure out where your hooks gonna come out and you poke a hole with the hook to start the hole get it in there then you feed the wire into the hole up through the fish and out to the mouth of the fish. Like that. 
Next, I have these three quarter inch wire nails. What you want, now that you got your hook running through with the eye coming out, you want this tack or nail to go through here to trap the bait in the head. So you go through the bottom jaw, through the eye and the salmon hook and come out behind the eye. It's hard to do on camera. Okay, so basically like that. Okay, sorry, I know this is hard to, hard to see, hard to do on camera. I'm just standing behind the camera, so there you got that. Now, I'm gonna take one of these little small dental rubber bands and I'm gonna go all the way around the head and then back into the tack. Not my best job, but you get the idea. I kind of fucked it up because I'm on camera, but that's what you do and you give it a bend. And try not to do what I did and knock all these scales off. You don't want that. But that's basically what you do. That spin, that bend in the, in the bait will give it a spin and make it hum through the water. It'll track the fish. Okay, I showed you how to put the nail through the head with the salmon hook, with the rubber band, right? Well, you can use this, okay? It's basically the same concept. You run the nail through, except for you don't use the rubber band. It's got this copper wire on it. You just wrap the copper wire around it. This is my, my leader. So imagine this is my, my main line, my 30 or 40 pound braid coming off of my rod to the salmon release, to the flasher, to about five and a half feet of leader line connected with a USA snap at this end, and then on the other end, a USA snap again. So when you get your bait, you take your bait and you just clip it through the, the eye of the salmon hook, like that. Then you lower it over the side of the boat. Two and a half pound ball. Then you see when you pull this spring loaded, you see inside that slot right there, there's that little bar. And when I pull it back, it moves out of the way. You put your eye of the weight through there and release it and now it's hanging on there so what happens is when the fish bites it pulls on that spring it drops the ball you'll never see the ball again it goes to the bottom of the ocean now you're fighting your fish and not your weight now when you lower this down into the water you want to make sure that your flasher doesn't get wrapped up around here if that happens, you're gonna lose your gear, you're gonna get broke off. You want to make sure when you lower it in the water that it's trailing behind your sink, your salmon release. And then once you see everything straight and nice and working, lower it down. All right, so now you lowered your, your gear into the water. You see uh, your flasher spinning correctly and your, your bait's trailing correctly. So now, you're gonna fish probably anywhere from 25 to 70 pools, depending on what depth you wanna fish, where the fish are at. Now how you do that is you go one, two, each, each pool is about a foot, three, four, five, and you count out how many pools until you get to the depth you want. Make sure that your drag is not too tight. You want the fish to be able to pull a little line. You don't want it to be too hard to rip the hook out of its mouth. When you're checking bait and you're pulling your line up into the boat, it's gonna be hard to do here in the house because I don't have the headroom. But this ball will swing around and kill somebody. So you wanna lift it up and grab your ball. Get control of that ball. When you go to grab your ball, have it about a pole length away from the tip of the rod. So you can swing it right up into your hand and grab it and get control of it. Then you can set your pull down and take your weight and place it down somewhere safe so it's not gonna hit somebody in the head. All right, so now let's look at a couple other ways you can fish the anchovy. 
We're gonna use the same salmon release, the same flasher, and an FBR. So the FBR comes with these instructions on how to set it up and how to set your hook length. Okay, so here's your FBR with the nail on the outside of the slot. You put your anchovy head inside, then you trap it in with this nail. You drop it to the slot, it'll pin it down into the fish. So you can see that this hook length is too long when you, when you feed it up inside where it goes. It sticks out past the anchovy. You can make this hook longer or shorter for whatever bait by pulling this tube. The, the center, it slides inside this one to change the, the length. If you want to make it shorter, hold the line and put the tube down inside here. Now if it's sticking, you might want to pull it all the way out, get it wet, and now you can adjust it better. So now I'm just going to hold on to this tube and pull the line, and that's going to shorten me up. So there's all the way short, and that's still a little longer than I want. but you could modify that in ways if you want to. I'm just gonna run with it now for demonstration's sake. It's pretty close, so now the next thing I do is put a rubber band. I'm just gonna take the rubber band, go around the hook, go around the end of the tail. So now the hook stays close to the body of the fish and it's gonna spin through the water like this. The UV flasher on the head will get the fish attention. It's spinning nice, you don't have to bend it, it spins on its own and uh, I've caught some nice salmon on these too. Got your salmon release, flasher, leader line that comes with the FBR and the FBR and that's ready to fish. For the next rig, I'm gonna use the owner's three to four aught hook to make it up. Uh, it's got a barb on it. Make sure you get the barb off, stay nice and legal. Just go in there with some pliers and smash it. You hear that, it, it broke off, you still Want to go back in and check it, maybe get you a file and dress it up. Stay nice and legal out there. So that's the hook I'm going to use on the next uh, bait, uh, which is a crippled anchovy head. I'm going to tie this hook directly onto my five foot piece of 30 pound mono leader line. Now that I got my hook tied onto my leader line, I'm going to take the opposite end and I'm gonna run it through this side right here, this little hole right here. Going up through like this, pull out some line. Then I'll stick it through the little hole right in front of that hole, right there. And then it's gonna run out the, the opposite side under the nose, or in front of the nose. Comes through here, goes in here, then comes out the opposite side under the nose. And then I run that down to close to my hook. There's my hook. Now I'm gonna tie a USA snap on this end. Again, salmon release flasher. I'm gonna snap into the swivel on the end of the flasher. Now on the other end, I've got my crippled anchovy head and my hook. What I do is I pull this little red pin out that's what traps your bait in there. Don't lose it. I'm gonna insert the head of the anchovy in like this. So I go in here, double penetrate, and come out underneath. Or you can just go through one side and out the other like that. I like to have it about an inch up from the end of the bait. Then I insert the head. Now I take my tack that comes with it and I pin the bait in there. So now it's trapped in there. So, I mean, this, this stuff's hard to do on camera. I know I'm kind of tearing this bait up and not doing the greatest job of this, but you get the idea, right? I hope so, because this is a big video. It's taking a lot of work. It's a lot harder than I thought it was going to be to set this all up and do it so anyways that's the idea and uh of course if i was doing this to fish it i'd be a little more careful but you get the you get the gist of it all right so that does it for bait let's move on to artificials 
Starting with the Apex, here are some popular colors. These are the four inchers, that's the size I like to use. So I just took a break from the video, went and bought a few things from Benicia Bait and Tackle. I got some hooks that I wanna use. And I got some 30 pound test fluorocarbon P-line leader line. Back to the Apex, uh, here's the hook and swivel that came off of the Apex. And I'm gonna replace it with this Gamagatsu uh, four aught side wash hook. It's a, a little bit longer hook and it's got a little bit more throat to it. So I'm gonna put this hook on. It's got the open eye, so I'm gonna have to crimp it. And I'm gonna put it on a Berkeley um, swivel, 100 pound test swivel, like that. Now I'm gonna take some pliers and smash the eye closed. Okay, so now that's securely attached. So I got my line run through the bait the way it was before. And I'm just gonna tie this on. I just run the leader down to the hook like so. And then I feed the line through and that is almost ready to fish. That's with my new hook on it. So now I'm gonna finish up my apex rig with the, by putting one of these snaps on the end of my bead chain so I can put it onto my dodger. Okay, so I just looked at my dodger and it actually has a nice snap on there already. So I'm gonna take that one off and just clip it into here. Your, your salmon release, your weight release, you got your dodger. And you've got about four and a half, five feet of line to the watermelon apex with the new hook and swivel that I put on there with the new leader line. That's ready to fish. And now I'm gonna show you how to make a hoochie mama. So I just unboxed this cop car color apex. I'm just gonna remove the leader line that comes with it. This one I'm gonna set up with the fluorocarbon. The reason why I got the fluorocarbon is because it's super clear. P-line fluorocarbon, a P-line squid skirt, and my Gamagatsu swash open eye four aught hook. And I'm just gonna feed the um, hook onto the hoochie. Or feed the hoochie onto the, worm, the hook. And moisten it a little bit so it slides up better. Stick that some bitch on, like that. Then I'm gonna take my pliers and smash the eye closed. Okay, hopefully you can see that. I'm just gonna smash it closed like that. I already put my bead chain on the end of the fluorocarbon. I got about five feet here. I got my cop car apex here. I'm gonna run my line through the top hole right here. Then through the lower, the hole below it. Then I'm gonna come down the body of the apex, go through the, the lowest hole down here towards the end, like that. Now I'm gonna tie my hook and my, my squid on there with the swivel. Now what you have is a hoochie mama. The Apex Hoochie Mama. All right, so next up we got hoochies. And um, I don't wanna really go in and rig everything right now, but I, I will tell you about what I would do. Let's just go ahead and unbox them here. Okay, so the Wiggle Hoochie has its own bill on it that gives it action. Um, it's got its own leader line. It's got two hooks. Again, Remember to smash your barbs down. Um, I would remake this leader with uh, these hooks. I like a little bigger hook on there. Or I would use these hooks too. And if you wanted to, you could put an extra little more hoochie on it. Take one of these squid skirts and you could put it on one of these hooks and give it a little more, a little more action if you want. But 
So these look like a squid. And, you know, they come in all different colors like I showed. I mean, here's a couple more. I got kind of a reddish pink or white, pink and white. And uh, so there's that. And I would fish this with a um, with a flasher, like the like this, because these already have their own action. Uh, I probably wouldn't put a dodger on it. I would just use a flasher. That one or, or this one is a good color for this too. It's a little smaller, but it kind of matches in color. You see, I got a bunch of these crocodile spoons, and I would fish these. Um, same thing, four to five foot leader. Um, Get rid of the treble hooks. You can't fish those treble hooks. You gotta have a single hook and smash down the barb. This one has a single hook, but it does have a barb on it, so you have to smash that barb down, get rid of that. Um, I would fish these with, a, with a, I would fish this with a sling blade from Shasta. Shasta Tackle makes these sling blades. They're real nice UV color and stuff. Um, I would fish that combo. Okay, so let's talk real quick about what kind of stuff to look for when you're trying to find the salmon. Um, there's different ways to do it, and one is to look for birds, look for mirror birds, pelicans. They're going to be there on top of the bait balls eating the bait. What's in the bait ball? Well, probably krill, probably anchovy, probably sardines, maybe herring. There's going to be bait fish, and uh, you're going to see them on your, on your fish finder. It's going to look like a cloud in there or it's going to be a bait ball it's not necessarily shaped like a ball it could be shaped like an upside down teardrop it could just be a cluster of small things that you're going to see there and uh if that if you have a bait ball the baits all gathered together that means there's some sort of threat nearby you know they they gather together like that um when they're being attacked by fish or um another thing to look for is whales if there's whales out there they're out there scooping up bait and where whales are scooping up bait, there's going to be fish out there eating bait too. So uh, also water temperature, you want to look for probably between 50, 55 degrees water temperature. Um, if you see areas where the water is dark, the fish might be holding up in a higher, uh, higher in the water column. Again, probably fishing anywhere from 20 to I don't know, 70 feet, but I mean, it, they may be deeper out of it. Generally, like right now, I think fishing 30 to 50 feet is, you're gonna find them probably up closer to 35 feet, but that changes all the time. Um, the other thing is trolling speed. You're gonna wanna be trolling two and a half to three knots. A knot is like 1.15 miles per hour. So a knot is, you know, slightly more than a, a mile per hour is. And uh, if you're not trolling in that range, if you're trolling too slow, you're gonna get fish nipping at your bait and short striking it. Uh, so you wanna stay in that range of trolling speed to have a better hookup ratio. Um, that's about it. And I, I know I'm rushing through this thing. I've got a lot of stuff to do today. I wish I could have planned it a little better and stuff, but I mean, I, I kind of showed you everything and I hope that helps. Uh, now I gotta go chop it up and uh, put it out there for you to watch it and I got a bunch of other stuff I gotta do today so sorry I did it's kind of hasty but you know it is salmon season right now and I wanted to get this out there um, to help you guys out in case you have any questions or you're looking for information I'm giving you a little information here if you got any questions let me know I'll help if I can if you got any suggestions or uh, anything you'd like to add go ahead in the comment section love to see what you got to say too thanks for watching um, good luck out there guys have fun you know, the weather's beautiful right now. The fish are biting like crazy, so you should be able to hook up. And so get out there and have some fun, that's all. All right, thanks for watching. Tap into my, my flasher, or my, actually I would fish this, fuck. So, the, fuck, the, they're, they're, fuck. And if you don't keep it underwater, it has a 